Hey guys, it's me, Hellhound. Um, me and my good buddy Shadow just went and saw X Men Apocalypse. And uh, if you've been watching my channel, you know that um, I'm going to see all the superhero mo movies this year. 2016 seems to be the year in comic book superhero movies, and I'm going to give my first impressions on every single one of them. And this one will be no exception. Um, I previously did the same thing for Deadpool and. Uh, Batman vs. Superman, Captain America Civil War, all of which I liked a lot, although, um, you know, some of them had a few problems here and there, but I already talked about that uh, already, see those videos for over an info on that, um, but, uh, well, what did, how did the latest one fare out? X-Men Apocalypse, um, you know, the long-awaited live-action feature debut of, uh, In Sabah Nur, also known as Apocalypse, um, he was T, uh, they teased it at the um, post credits scene in uh, X-Men Days of Future Past. Um, and uh, so we knew that that's what we were getting. And uh, did I like the movie? Uh, no, I hated it. It sucked. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, no. Um, yeah, it was very, very good. Um, now, previously my favorite movie in the series was actually Days of Future Past. Um, closely followed by X2, X-Men United, um, and then probably the very first film. So, as you know, I really like Brian Singer's, uh, um, entries in the series. Uh, first Class is really good, too. Um, and I haven't really figured out where this one is gonna place, like, in my ranking. Like, I don't know. I think Days of Future Past is still my favorite. Apocalypse might be my second favorite. I don't know. I'm gonna have to, like, probably rewatch it when I buy it on DVD, um, or maybe just think about it a little more. I just saw the movie. It's just fresh in my mind. I still haven't really evaluated it yet. I haven't, you know, given it tons of uh, elaborate thought. Um, but I loved it. Um, I still think Captain America Civil War was probably my favorite um, superhero movie 2016 so far. Marvel really knows what they're doing with the MCU. And um, But, you know, I always love the X-Men movies as well. Um, now, a common complaint among Brian Singer's X-Men movies is that he kind of just takes the premise of the mutants and does whatever the hell he wants with it. He kind of has his own, um, well, his own agenda with, uh, you know, the reason he was attached to the project initially, which was, um, about a group of people fighting for rights and, like, fighting for their place in the world and, you know, fighting against their oppressors, oppressors, uh, sorry, um, and there was, like, that's pretty much all his, uh, the first two movies were, despite being very good. And, like, another common complaint was, um, yeah, he just kind of did whatever he wanted, and it wasn't really an adaptation of the comics. Another common complaint was kind of focus on one character. Um, you know, one character got the main focus, and it reduced all the other characters, sometimes more important ones and really great ones, to, like, mere background props. Um, like Wolverine, the original trilogy. And kind of more recently, Mystique, uh, played by Jennifer Lawrence, um... She gets the spotlight a little too much. And that was something I was worried about in this movie. But really, um, you know, she seemed just to get just about the, about the same amount of screen time as the... Oh my god, I'm getting tongue-tied. The same amount of screen time as the other characters. I'm still excited. Sorry, I'm really pumped. I uh, Me and Shadow saw the movie. Um, I liked it more than he did. He was a little disappointed. He still liked it, but he had a few problems with it. Uh, that I, you know, I, I drove home blasting some uh, Dark Angel and some Ozzy, and I was just like still really excited and pumped. Uh, it's really, really late, too. Um, it's getting really late now, so um, sorry if I'm a little tongue-tied and can't talk. Um, but yeah, I, I, um, basically what I'm getting at is people had those issues with Brian Singer. Now, and they, and they felt like the X-Men didn't really work together as a team, and it wasn't really about the team of mutants from the comic, and he just kind of had his own agenda what with the, um, you know, people fighting for rights. And it is a very realistic take on if, if mutants are real, um, Brian Singer's universe he's created is pretty much exactly how it would go down. I'd say it's pretty accurate. You know, there'd be people, be, there'd be people who fear them um, and oppress them and just want to, you know, there's people who want to control them. Um, you know, there's evil mutants, like there's a fight for power. There's evil mutants who want to take over the world and take control and, you know, enslave humanity or destroy humanity. And, like, it'd probably pretty much go down just like that if people had superpowers in real life and if people were gifted they're born with these special abilities um you know in their genes um but yeah um this movie still continues that storyline but 
I think they did a really good job bringing the team together. They all played an equal part. They all got their time to shine. We had Cyclops finally in action. I love Scott Marsden in the first three, but he barely had anything to work with. He was just kind of there, like, to fight with Wolverine or something. Like, <laughs> and, uh, you know, who definitely got the it's too much screen time in the original movies. Wolverine is my favorite X-Men, um, you know, and for good reason. Uh, maybe a popular and obvious choice, but he really is. But I definitely was glad that he stopped being the main focus and we finally got to see other characters get their time to shine. Um, and a uh, minor spoiler, um, speaking of Wolverine, minor spoiler, if you've seen the third trailer, it's already out. I didn't know Wolverine was going to be in this movie. Um, with Batman vs. Superman and Civil War, I pretty much knew like everything. I feel like I already knew what was going to happen in the movie because the trailers gave too much away. Now with this one, that's a common problem these days. With this one, I purposely avoided reading too much info about the movie, and I d deliberately um, didn't watch the third trailer um, and read a, like, a lot of the message boards or anything because I didn't want anything to be spoiled. I wanted it to be all surprises, and Wolverine being in the movie was a great surprise. And he had a pretty short cameo, which is just like I wanted. I Either don't have him in the movie or I'll just have him there briefly. And the scenes they did have pretty much... Um, proved that they're completely ignoring X-Men Origins Wolverine. They pretty much erased that movie from continuity. It's non-canonical. They pretty much erased it. I mean, Deadpool kind of already did anyway. But, like, I'm pretty sure that movie didn't even happen in this universe anymore. Um, Stryker's still a relatively young man. He's a lot younger than he was in Origins, and he just created Wolverine that Repin X. Uh, you really see him as, like, a caged animal being freed, and he goes on a rampage. Um, it even explains how he got his memory erased, you know, they're trying to control him. They did a way better job in five minutes explaining Wolverine's origin than an entire movie of X-Men Origins Wolverine did, so. <laughs> Brian Singer rocks. Um, and I understand all the complaints he gets, like he's just kind of doing his own thing with these characters, not being close to the comics, but I think this movie really proved that he's trying to finally give the fans what they want. Apocalypse has done very well. Oscar Isaac did a great job playing him. And I liked when he used his normal, more subtle um, voice over over his like over the top shouting one. Um, I thought he was more, uh, way more menacing doing that. And they did a great job. And and I'm finally glad. I'm really glad that they finally have like they made it all about the, a villain and a battle of good versus evil. Like a common problem in the MCU, the Marvel movies, is that the villain's kind of like an afterthought. Some of them don't even become a problem till the very end. Some of them don't even they gain their powers or suit up until the very end. And, like, they're kind of just like an obstacle. And, like, part of the, the great thing about comic books is the villain. Like, one of the great things is the villains. You have the, you have the superheroes and the supervillains. And, like, I was always interested, from even a young age, that's what draw, drew me to it, the classic good versus evil story. And, like, this one really delivers a good villain. Like... We've had a lot of human villains in the past, like, you know, William Stryker uh, is probably the most recurring foe that they face, um, you know, and, uh, Bolivar Trask, um, I didn't really like Sebastian Shaw, I mean, he was a mutant, um, in first class, as played by Kevin Bacon, he kind of annoyed me, and so I'm glad we finally had, like, another villain besides Magneto that was just awesome and just awe-inspiring, um, and speaking of Magneto, he has a really tragic story arc here, um, and we do, it does confirm, it was hinted at in Days of Future Past, but it's confirmed that Quicksilver is indeed his son. Uh, I really wish they had, had Scarlet Witch with it, and, you know, they're supposed to be twins, you know, Peter and, you know, um, and Wanda Maximoff. Um, you know, but, you know, no dice, because they're using Scarlet Witch in the MCU and Quicksilver in the XCU, as I call it. But whatever, you know, it's a compromise, I guess. Um, and so, they actually confirmed that he's his son, and, like, he's really interested in meeting you. And Quicksilver steals the show once again. His scene in Days of Future Past where he's moving in slow motion and just saving the day while that song plays was just awesome. And here they had a similar scene where he just walks up, he's like, hmm? And he saves the day. He's going so fast and he saves everybody while sweet dreams are made that this is playing. And it's just awesome. I was just like, it gave me chills and I was just laughing the whole time. I was just like, this is so cool. Um, you know, I'm sure a bunch of people are going to complain and say, oh, that's too serious. It's not realistic or it's not depressing enough. They're called comic books, not tragic books. Those are, those are, you know, I mean, come on. Uh, people just want a brooding hero that just mopes around and is depressed. And that seems to be a common complaint of the Marvel, uh, cinematic universe and the x-men movies too but there's plenty of moments of tension and trauma in this movie like it's it's a full-scale invasion by inside by nerd his four horsemen 
as he calls them, you know, which of course is Angel, Storm, uh, Magneto, who isn't just a pawn, but has his own story as well. Um, he's probably the most dynamic character in the whole um, saga. And also Psylocke, um, who I think we previously saw in The Last Stand, but uh, it was pretty much retconned here, just like Angel. Angel was like uh, probably 18 in The Last Stand, which took place in 2006. This one takes place in, I believe, 1983. And uh, Angel's, like, already an adult. So they're pretty much ignoring that movie, too, which is fine. I guess you can say the time travel thing erased it or whatever. There's a lot of continuity errors in this series. There really is. There's a lot of holes, a lot of things that don't add up, a lot of inconsistencies. But I don't let that bother me. I'm just going to, like, not worry about it and enjoy the ride. It bothered me at first, but now I'm just like, well, oh well. I mean, and there's three main trilogies now. We have the original trilogy, you know, X-Men, X2, uh, Last Stand. Then we have... You know, this new trilogy, which is kind of a prequel trilogy. It's kind of like the Star Wars films. Um, you know, we had First Class, Days of Future Past, now Apocalypse. Then we have the Wolverine trilogy. X-Men Origins Wolverine. The Wolverine. And then a future, a one that's coming out next year, which is going to be Hugh Jackman's last time playing Wolverine. And I'm, I'm reportedly going to be based on Old Man Logan, which I'm kind of worried about because I don't see how they can make that into a movie. Um, it's been a while since I read it. Maybe I should read it again. I never particularly cared for that story arc all too much. I know a lot of people like it. It's probably blasphemy for me to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for the sacrilege, but I just never got into it. I didn't think it was a great idea. Um, and I won't give away why. You'll just have to read it and see. Maybe you'll see what I mean. Or maybe you'll say, what is hell I'm talking about? He doesn't know anything. Uh, you know, whatever. But um, I don't really want to see that made into a movie. Um, but there's one thing I'm really excited about. And I'll get to that at the end of the video because it's a major spoiler for Apocalypse. Something I'm really excited about. Um, but yeah, my main point is for the fi first time, maybe not the first time, but like, they, this was the, this film really utilized the X-Men as a team. I mean, we had Cyclops meeting Jean Grey for the first time, which is awesome. Mystique was in it a lot, but she didn't really overshadow the other characters. It wasn't in the spotlight like she was in Days of Future Past. It wasn't all about her this time. Um, you know, I'm kind of sick of seeing Raven. And it's only because of, um, Jennifer Lawrence's star power, because she was so popular in the Hunger Games movies. Um, but it was it didn't wasn't too bad. Um, I also love James McAvoy as Charles Xavier, and yes, this movie explains why he's bald. Um, it's not a stupid reason like in Batman vs Superman they shave Lex's head for like no reason just because he's going to jail, I guess. Um, basically, just say, look, I told you I was Lex Luthor. I have a shaved head now. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's great. Like I didn't think anybody could be as good as Patrick Stewart or better, but wow, he really he just he's just awesome. Um, I mean, wow. Uh, he does a phenomenal job. He's probably the best actor in the whole cast. And I also really like um, Nicholas Howard as um, Hank McCoy, Beast. I would have loved to see more of Kelsey Grammer playing the older version. That was the one thing I loved about The Last Stand. I'm glad they brought him back briefly for Days of Future Past. But Nicholas Howard does a good job. And it's like kind of weird. He's like the Hulk now. Whenever he gets angry, he transforms now. Eh, whatever. To, you know, his furry form. There's a lot of blue people in this movie. There's, you know, there's a lot of blue people in X-Men, period. But I think they're all, like, you know, in this movie. Beast, Nightcrawler, Mystique. Even Apocalypse is, like, kind of, you know, purplish, you know, blue. Um, <laughs> um, some really cool uh, flashbacks to the ancient Egypt. Um, his origin was done really well. Um, but, and I gotta say... When he gives Ar uh, Angel his metal wings and transforms him to Archangel, they're playing Four Horsemen by Metallica. And I was just like, yeah! You know, me and Shadow were both just like, oh yeah, we're, we just love that in the theater. That was so perfect. What a great use of that song. You know, uh, metalheads like us would just eat that shit up. And, you know, just like, yeah, <laughs> come to take your life. And it was just such a perfect use of it. I was like, wow, I can't believe they actually did that. And I'm sure some people are going to bitch about it. It's like, oh, it's too cheesy. Uh, it's not serious enough. Uh, it's too jokey. It's like, ah, get out of here. Just, you know, just go be miserable somewhere else. Uh, ugh, comic book movies clearly aren't for you. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um... Yeah, this movie, yeah, you really got to see the X-Men. They really got the time to shine. Um, Cyclops and Jean. Nightcrawler was kind of made a wuss again, like he was in X2 when he was played by Alan Cumming. And they kind of did the same thing here. I always thought in the comics, I always pictured him being, maybe it was just my imagination, maybe it was just my, like, way I interpreted the character. I always pictured him being, like, more fierce and kind of badass, like, um, but, like, they made him kind of clumsy and dorky in this movie, which is fine. I mean, I just kind of thought they were going to, like, the reason they brought him back was to you know, kind of, uh, kind of, uh, redeem what they did to the character next to, which wasn't bad. I'm not knocking, 
the X2 version. I just kind of thought that, like, I don't know. Well, they were supposed to be the same character, I suppose. Um, I don't know how much continuity that shares the originals anymore after the time travel thing in Days of Future Past, which is still my favorite, I think, I'm pretty sure. I love seeing the new actors and the old actors, you know, together in one movie. That was really cool and really well done. I usually hate time travel, too, but it's actually done pretty well in that one. Um, you also have the Days of Future Past uh, graphic novel over there. I've been reading that a lot. Um, but, uh... Yeah, like, what else can I say? Um, Cyclops was actually used to his full potential. I really want to see him become the great leader that he's going to be. Like, it kind of seemed like Mystique was the leader, like, even towards the end of the movie, and I was just kind of rolling my eyes. Like, come on, Cyclops needs to step on being the new leader. Uh, yeah, Beast was done well, as I said. Um, and we finally got to see um, Scott Summers and his brother Havoc. Havoc was in the movie. Um, that was, you know, Alex Summers um, returning from the previous movies. I was kind of, I'm glad they confirmed that they were brothers. Only this time, you know, um, Havoc is the older one. Cyclops is younger, but, you know, whatever. It's fine. Um, and more McTaggart. She returns in this one, too. And, um, you know, after Xavier erased her memory, they have a really good uh, conclusion with that, too, so don't worry. Um, yeah, it shows Cerebro, like, fully functional and, like, looking, you know, a lot more modern, like the way it did in the first X-Men movie, more so than it did in First Class. Um... You know, they have, they have the school, of course. Um, Professor Charles Xavier is back, like, on his game. He's not just, like, an alcoholic, moping, uh, you know, loser like he was in the last movie. He's actually turned his thing around. He's, like, more heroic again. And he's just wonderful. Gosh, he's just, I could watch him all day. He's just phenomenal. He's probably the best part of the movie, again. And I love Wolverine's cameo. It was great. Wow. He's just, oh, man, that was, like, just awesome. And it was a total surprise for me, because I didn't think he was going to be in this movie at all. So, he still kept his streak alive. Hugh Jackman's been in all the X-Men movies so far. Not counting Deadpool. That doesn't count. It's more like a spinoff. Um, and, yeah, he's, like, the only actor to have played a superhero that many times. What is it? Like, eight or nine times now? <laughs> And it's going to be yet another one. It's going to be his last time playing the role before he retires. But it's fine. We've seen plenty of him. We've seen more of him than, like, any other superhero ever. So um, he definitely is going to go out with a bang. But, yeah, um, yeah, Oscar Isaac was great as Apocalypse. Uh, and Sabah Nur, you know, he did great. Um, I really like the chick who played Storm this time. I liked Halle Berry as uh, Aurora Monroe and, you know, the other movies. But I think this chick was did really good. I'd like to see more of her. I don't know if they're going to make another one, another X-Men movie. I mean, I'm sure they will someday. But I don't know if they're going to make like another most continuity besides the upcoming um, solo Wolverine film. Um, but it'd be good. And what I was going to get into, the spoiler, huge spoiler alert here. This is the post credit scene. Okay, huge spoiler alert. Turn the video off. You don't want the post credit scene spoiled. Okay, you ready? It dealt with Nicholas Essex. I mean, sorry, Nathaniel Essex. Oh, my God. Um, I'm tired, sorry. Um, Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister is going to be the next villain. Probably in the solo, solo Wolverine film, which mm, kind of sucks, but oh, my God. Fucking Mr. Sinister. I was so worried that they were going to have it. He was my favorite villain in the 90s cartoon, which I still agree is the best adaption of the comics so far, even next to the movies. And this movie actually felt a little more like the cartoon than any of the previous ones did, which is awesome. Yeah, -na 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 -na, you know, <laughs> I'm such a dork. I'm sorry. But, um, yeah, fucking Mr. Sinister. Oh, my God. I was so excited. I was worried about that because I was like, come on. They got to set up Mr. Sinister. They had Apocalypse. Perfect opportunity. It wasn't really the way I wanted, but I think it's going to be awesome. They didn't actually show him, but they, they hinted that he's coming. And I guess he'll be the main villain in the next Wolverine film. Um... I really wanted to see another, here's another spoiler, big spoiler, Archangel dies. And that's unfortunate because I wanted to finally see a movie with the five original X-Men teaming up. Um, I know Iceman was young, like in the first movie, but they could have had it like, I don't know, they could have retconned it a little more at the time. The, the continuity's all screwed up anyway, so to hell with it. And they had four of the, out of the five original in this movie, Gene and Cyclops. Um, you know, Storm and Angel were on the bad side of the war, but of course they became good at the end. Another spoiler. Um, if you're still watching the video and you're mad that I spoiled it, I did warn you. Um, but yeah, just a battle could work. It was all at war and the whole world's at stake. You really did feel the danger in this where You did, really did feel that, you know, somebody, a good guy was probably going to die. Or some, you know, people were going to die. People we care about. I kind of thought Mystique was going to die there for a minute. I kind of wish she had, honestly. I'm sorry, but... <coughs> she shouldn't be the face of X-Men. She shouldn't be the leader at the end. So she shouldn't even really be a member of the X-Men. I mean, I'm, I'm glad her character's kind of gone, you know, her arc has kind of come full circle, and it's great. Um, but yeah, the main, the real character, the main character who's 
Uh, I've always been on his side, by the way, is Magneto, um, Eric Lyncher, or Magnus. Uh, you know, I've always been on his side. I'm always saying there's a famous point of view. I've always kind of taken his, you know, his point of view over Charles, especially in the movies. Maybe not so much the comics, um, where he was, you know, kind of more, more cruel and evil, um, at least at first. But, um... Yeah, his character's really the most dynamic one. He's gone through, like, so many changes and so much. Like, you can really see, understand why he hates humanity. In this movie, another spoiler, his wife and child are killed by humans. It's just like, does he need any more fuel to be against uh, the mortals? I mean, you know, against homo sapiens? And, and, you know, not, you know, think that homo superior should just wipe out the human race? That's what the mutants call themselves, homo superior. Especially the evil ones. Um... And what I thought, another thing though about his daughter, I thought that like that was going to be Polaris, like an early version of Polaris, you know, like because they already had um, Quicksilver. In the road cut of Days of Future Past, they hint at Scarlet Witch. They never show her, but they kind of they kind of hint at it, which is good. So I'm glad it is, you know, they did uh, acknowledge her. Um, really, the twins without each other separate is kind of retarded. I kind of rather that uh, Scarlet Witch had just been in these and not the Marvel Universe. They, you know, it's much it would be much better if she was in these. Um, played by, you know, Emily, or Elizabeth Olsen, whatever her name is. Um, she would have been good in these, in the X-Men movies, too. She wasn't, I don't feel like she was really needed in Avengers, but I'm glad she was. I kind of just wish they could have used both, those characters for both of them, and like, you know, but I understand they had to copyright, compromise, copyright, blah, 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 the rights, the rights to certain characters, all that crap. I dream of a future where we don't have to worry about all that shit anymore, but that probably never happened. But yeah, Magneto, um, he's always been like my favorite character, and I'm glad we finally got another villain like as awesome as him, but it didn't make Magneto just a simple pawn, like a simple servant, he still had his own like identity and his own ideals and kind of his own agenda. Michael Fassbender is a great choice, um, you know, he's a great successor to Ian McKellen, who played the older version, uh, yeah, the, well, the old movies, but the older character, you, you know what I mean, um. He kind of downplayed a little this time. But he really felt for him. He was really emotional. Um, and I like the way his arc ended. I like the way the character... I like the conclusion, basically. It was a really a good way to end the series. If this is the last one of X-Men, like not counting spinoffs like Wolverine and Deadpool and you know other and Gambit and Cable and all that, um, I, it, I think it's a pretty good ending. Um, I kind of want to see it rebooted at some point. Like maybe ten years from now with the original five X-Men... And then eventually add characters like Storm, and I, I guess eventually Wolverine. Even though I think we've seen enough of him, and I'm like really like to see other characters shine, and then you know, and some others. Um, and I think Jubilee is in this movie too. I'm pretty sure she was the Asian chick at the school. Um, I don't think I ever referred to her by name, but I'm pretty sure that was Jubilee, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't think it was supposed to be the chick who did the portals, and so yeah, I'm pretty sure that was Jubilee. Um, so. There's that. She always kind of annoyed me in the cartoon. I thought that they picked a... She was brand like a brand new character. I thought they could have had somebody better, like Iceman. Could have been a recurring uh, main character instead of just for one episode or something. But anyway, that's the cartoon. Um, anything else I should add about the X-Men Apocalypse um, while I'm at it? By the way, this isn't really a review. It's my first impressions. Um, just, you know, what I thought about the movie at first. Um, you know, I'm going to do that with all the superhero movies this year. Um, probably Suicide Squad, I guess, will be next. Um, and then, you know, Doctor Strange. I don't, I don't, whichever one comes first. And then I think that's pretty much it for this year. Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows. I might not do a video for that one, though. But it does look better than the last movie. Uh, you know, um, Bebop and Rocksteady, Krang, uh, Casey Jones, The Technodrome, Dimension X, probably. But, uh, yeah, X-Men. Um... There's just so many moments that I loved in this one. So many moments I was just like, yes! You know, the Metallica song and <laughs> the song where Quicksilver saves them all and steals the show. And he got a lot more screen time this time, by the way. Uh, Magneto's scenes where he's redeemed. Um, I've already spoiled most of it all. So if you're watching this video at this point, you've probably already seen the movie. And maybe you just want to see another take on it from another perspective. Um, yeah, there's so many great scenes. Um, yeah, uh, it was wonderful. Um... Anything else I have to add? I think I've covered just about everything. If I missed anything, I apologize. I was thinking about what I was going to say the whole drive home, and I was, like, had my windows down. I was blasting my music. Shadow was in the car right beside me. He was driving, like, he was originally going to, eventually going to go the opposite way. We were, I was seeing him. I was like, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, X-Men. Um, blasting our, our 
or loud music. <laughs> oh gosh, we're just a couple of dorks. Um, I really wanted him to get in this video with me and talk about it as well um, as a, like a guest or maybe a future uh, show with us two. We already got a show of Spellbinder and the one with Dark Wolf and a few other things in the works, but um, uh, but yeah, he had to. He just wanted to go home, and he was a little disappointed with the movie. Though he agreed with me on like all the all its strong points. I definitely liked it. I, I definitely it was definitely a hit for me and not a miss. And I haven't read any other reviews. I haven't heard anybody else's opinions. I haven't looked at the rating on IMDb or Rotten Tomatoes. I've read any. Thing that a critic or any other just fans or other comic, fellow comic book nerds have said, um, I haven't. So I don't know what the general consensus is right now. With comic book movies, there's either everybody loves them or everybody hates them. They're usually known as a disaster, like Batman and Robin, Catwoman, Daredevil, uh, more recently Fantastic Four 2015. Um, or they're a, a huge hit, like uh, Spider-Man 2, The Dark Knight, The Avengers. Um, now, the two DC movies, Man of Steel and Batman vs. Superman, were very polarizing. People either loved them and thought they were the best movie ever, or they hated them and completely. Um, now, those movies, you know, like the DC universes. With Marvel, it's pretty much either good or bad. Uh, and Fox, you know, Fox is doing the X-Men movies. and Doesn't need to do any Fantastic Four anymore. Marvel should get the rights to that, because, uh, yeah. Fox does great with X-Men, but lousy with Fantastic Four. Wow. Um, but, yeah, um... I love Dr. Man Apocalypse. I recommend it. Uh, I think you should go see it um, for sure. Um, um, this video is probably long enough as it is, so if, if, it, if it didn't cover anything or something I forgot, I'm sure there's probably some other important details I forgot, but um, oh well. Uh, go see it. Uh, judge for yourself and get your own opinion. Um, and uh, well, until next time. Um, I guess the next superhero movies I'll see are, you know, Suicide Squad, Doctor Strange, and whatever else they have this year. <laughs> um, I named them all at the beginning of my Deadpool video, but now I can't think straight for some reason. I guess I'm just tired and still kind of pumped at the same time. I'm excited but tired at the same time. So it's making it to where my brain cells aren't communicating properly. But, um, okay, enough rambling, enough ta shit talking. I sound like a raving lunatic right now, and I'm going to stop that. So uh, I'm Hellhound. Thanks for watching my show, and um, long live the X-Men. Yeah. Later.